Hello and you're very welcome back to the P.S. Gilmore story and episode 60. And um, today we're starting a, a new little chapter on um, the Statue of Liberty herself. And uh, we'll be exploring more about P.S. Gilmore's role in her story. And this is part one of that um, story. In 2019, I brought an idea to our radio broadcaster here in Ireland, RT. Um, and um, the idea was that they would be interested in uh, uh, doing a, a radio documentary on um, this Irishman's role in the Statue of Liberty. And so we would end up um, going to the Statue of Liberty and, um, in fact, going to New York and interviewing some people, which I arranged. And um, we had a great time, produced a, a good uh, radio documentary. And um, when, when we uh, came back to Ireland, it was all put together by RTE. Um, and um, uh, RT won uh, a national award for it. So it it um, it it was uh, very successful. But even more importantly than that, it was it gained quite a lot of interest in the story of P. S. Gilmore. So here is that day when we got on the ferry. Um, from Battery Park to uh, go to Lady Liberty herself, or actually beside Lady L Liberty and Ellis Island. And um, it was very exciting because uh, for me, I had been in discussions for years before this with the curator and historian of Ellis Island. His name is Barry Moreno. I believe Barry uh, is... Um, Retired now, but what a gentleman and what um, uh, an academic he is. Um, the, uh, the, the wonderful part of uh, what Barry found in his research was he was very aware of Gilmore and Gilmore's importance to the Statue of Liberty uh, itself. And so... When I made contact with him, he was absolutely delighted. And so we didn't go to the Statue of Liberty. We went to the next little island, which was called Ellis Island. And here is the um, the immigration centre that opened in 1892, I believe, and was open until 1924. In that period of time, of something over 30 years, um, it um, inspected over 12 million immigrants that uh, came into, uh, that were processed into America. And uh, each uh, immigrant, the, the, the amount of time would be somewhere between three and seven hours given to each um, immigrant in those days. So it, it was a, a huge uh, task and uh, one that had to be done and done accurately. Here's Barry. And um, as I said, I can't speak highly enough of this gentleman because of uh, his help and assistance in providing this interview. And um, if you go online, you can look for Ireland's first superstar uh, radio documentary by R. T E uh, radio uh, and um, you, you're sure to find it online. Barry has um, uh, produced a number of um, books like this encyclopedia of Ellis Island and um, he would be the authority that at least that I know of on uh, the, uh, the island and the immigration. Uh, policies of the time images of 
America, um, Ellis Island, again, Barry Marino. So um, he's the go-to expert, um, uh, in my book at least. Um, you'll find him on, I believe, uh, Amazon and so on and so forth. And uh, here, for anyone that has um, family that came through Ellis Island, maybe they'd be interested in this, the Ellis Island quiz book. Um, but when when I told Barry that I was researching this man, Gilmore, uh, he was absolutely over the moon. He was delighted because of the importance of Gilmore in this story. More of that later. Here's Barry with the gentleman from RTE uh, who's doing the interviewing, Tim Desmond. And uh, I don't know how long we were there. Must have been between, uh, I suppose, three quarters of an hour, somewhere like that. It was it was a great thrill to be there. Um, but first of all, we have to go back to the Visitor's Guide to the Centennial Exhibition and Philadelphia, 1876, the guidebook. And why? This is 10 years before the Statue of Liberty was opened because we're looking at Gilmore's relationship with the Statue of Liberty and how well did he know her and what she was about and so on and so forth. In that guidebook, there was two maps. Um, or there is two maps, I should say. I own the guidebook. But um, this is the site plan, the grounds and buildings and so on. And um, uh, Gilmore would find um, the uh, Statue of Liberty over the next few years and become, I suppose, personally attached to the um, idea of um, a clearance centre for immigration make it easier I suppose and more friendly uh, in in some respects for immigrants he was an immigrant and he understood here is um, a, a stereo view photograph of the hand of the and torch of this it's Statue of Liberty and um, it says so down the right hand side the colossal hand and torch of Liberty right beside a lake and here is another view of that same lake. And if you look at that lake over on the left hand side of the centre of that lake, you see an object sticking up. And that is, again, another view of uh, the Lady Liberty's um, hand and torch. And this was the first view, the first sight that Americans had of this um, massive, um, I suppose, piece of engineering um, as it was then. Now, what we'll do is next week we will see um, how, or the next time that Gilmore will see any part of the Statue of Liberty. But right now they were trying to get an interest. They were trying to get um, um, a reaction uh, from... Um, wherever they could because there wasn't exactly a list of places around the globe that wanted to put up the Statue of Liberty. Um, from the French perspective, they wanted a reaction so that they could basically build the next part of it. And, um, and so that's what we're going to look at next week. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little... Um, uh, uh, part of the story uh, the, more next week as I said click like and subscribe when you have a chance and if you have any questions please uh, send me an email at gilmoresband at gmail.com click subscribe and like and thank you very much bye bye